So, how do simple machines make a job easier? Jeff? They trade dif distance for effort. Distance for effort. That is correct. I'm going to change effort to force, but yes. So they change distance for effort. So they make work easier. So we said simple machines make work easier because they trade force for distance. It takes less force, but you have to travel over a greater distance. Which simple machines do you think would be better at lifting heavy things? Gretchen. A lever. A lever. Eric. A pulley. a pulley. What else would be good at lifting heavy things? David. Incline plane. Incline plane. Are there any others? Okay. What about moving things sideways? Ryan. A wheel and axle. A wheel and axle. So you are going to be industrial engineers. You were hired by the Cape Cod Potato Chip Factory. Do we get free potato chips? Um, no. no. Only if you do a good job, maybe. Do we get a dis an employee discount? No, you're only a consultant. <laughs> um, you are brought in to help one of their subsystems. The factory workers currently lift heavy bags of potatoes, the load, from the floor to the loading dock many times a day. You've been asked to make this subsystem more efficient and to improve the ergonomics. So to give you an idea, so thinking down the road for your design challenge, here is your load. This Picture it. It's a bag of potatoes. This is your bag of potatoes. Your bag of potatoes will have to be moved. So here's your de design challenge, just to give you an idea. Your bag of potatoes will start right here. You'll notice I put tape to show you and the tape will be back a little bit further. It's six feet from this tape line to that, this tape line right here. You have to move your load from here to the tape line and get it on the loading dock, AKA the table. So to do that, you could go like this. Oh, it's really heavy. And put it here. Or, it's potatoes, remember. Or I could drag the potatoes. Oh. Drag, drag, and then I have to lift. Oh. And I do it. And so you have been asked to make this more efficient. So you are going to be using measuring the force today to lift a load using a simple machine. And the simple machines we're going to use are an incline plane, a wheel and axle, a lever, um, and a pulley. And we're going to use a single pulley and a double pulley. You'll be lifting your loads, which are these. You'll be using a spring scale, which basically means it's a scale that measures things with a spring in it, to lift your load and to measure the force. In the spring scale, you'll see right here, on the left-hand side, it's in grams. Ignore the left-hand side. We are measuring in newtons, because you measure force in newtons. The spring scale, the number one rule with the spring scales, and I'm saying this and I want you to really listen, you need to zero the spring scale every time you go to lift something. And zeroing is as simple as, if you look at the scale, there's this little tab right here. So this little tab, Tony, right here. You just gently pull it up or down so that the little bar, so what happens is there's a little metal bar should be right on the zero. So a spring scale measures the force needed to lift or move an object. So you will see that every single load has a nice little pink string on it. Yay. It's nice and bright, you can't miss it. You take and put your load, you hook it. I lift it, and then I read it. So I hold it, and you're gonna have to guesstimate. So right now it's five, and what you will see is in the spring scale, there are four lines. Each line is a quarter. I'd like you to measure to the nearest quarter. When you come over to the incline plane, you will set up your blocks. You are going to be moving every load six inches. Okay? Guess what? How high do you think these four blocks are? Tony. Exactly. So the goal is, is to lift 
your load or your potatoes on top of the, that box. So what I will do is, I check it, it's zeroed. I'm going to take and lift it until it clears it. And then I'm going to read that it's 5.25, OK? Load. How many newtons of force did it take to move the load by hand? So that's me by hand lifting it up. So you're going to write in here 5.25. Then you will see here that you have a long board and a short board. You will set up your incline plane. You will take zero your spring scale. It does not matter which one you do first. You will do both of them, the short and the long. You start here, and you will have one person pulls it up while another one reads the scale. And you will measure how many newtons it takes to get up to the top. Let's look at the lever station. In the lever station, you are going to be testing three things. So your carabiner right here is your load. So for the first position, A, you move the ball all the way so that it's to the, when you're looking at it, the right of the A. So you need to make your bottle clear the top, the bottom of the bottle clear the top of that tape. So I'm going to record up here. To lift the load, how many newtons did it take by hand? It took five. Yes. So you should record that in yours. So please record five right in your lever. I take my zero at spring scale, and I attach it right here. And once I clear, OK, so I've cleared it. Now I take my reading, OK? I record that in position A. What's this white ball called on the lever? It's a wiffle ball, but fulcrum. Talk about the fulcrum related to the load. How close is the fulcrum to the load? Is it better to have it closer or further away to lift the load? OK? That's what you need to put in your summary. So then you put the front of the cart on the tape line. You put the water bottle in the cart. You zero your spring scale. You slide it. And you read it. And then you have someone measuring. You record it in. You're going to record your scale reading for with wheels, without wheels. So the pulley, you're testing two pulleys here. Hook to the door like this. Set it up so it's perfectly level. Let it go. It shouldn't fall through because it's knotted. Zero it. Hook it to the loop. Then pull it down. Once it clears the six inches, you read how many newtons it takes. Then you gently lower it down. Do not slam it down. Unhook the carabiner. Here's the trick. Hook the carabiner to the hoop. So then it makes a perfect circle, so that way it does not get messed up. OK? For the double pulley, you need to make sure you take the one that has the rope tied to the top. When you come over, you want the top one and the top. You then up, take the carabiner and let go of the rope. You set it so it should look like this. So let me show you. It should look like this. MK, will you come and loop this carabiner right onto that? No, nope, right here. This one to that. OK. You let it rest. You take your spring scale, which I don't have it on me at the moment. So attach your spring scale. Make sure it's on zero. And pull down so it clears the six inches. Record how many newtons. 